So for today's video, I thought I would do a video all about my anxiety. Can we all just get a hallelujah? Just for speaking up about mental health. Now, we are in 2019. If mental health, if now isn't the time we can talk openly about our mental health, I don't know when we will be able to, but it's something very important and I feel like although it's starting to get a lot more recognition and a lot more openness on this platform, it's still not where it should be and mental health is real, suffering every day is real and it needs more awareness, more resources out there to help other people feel less alone. So that is why we are starting a new series on this channel called Self Care Sundays. I was going to do Mental Health Mondays but Monday isn't a day in my upload schedule so we're doing a Sunday and we're going to call it self care because self care although it won't solve the anxiety from the root it will help to make yourself feel a little bit less stressed in these instances so I thought I would talk to you all about my anxiety, my anxiety story especially in this last year because I feel like things have changed a lot and we're gonna do a video every single week on different mental health topics so whether that is creative arts video or a chatty sit down like how to find the right therapist, how to find the right medication, everything like that. I feel like for the past year I have been struggling non-stop and there are a few channels out there which I find really really helpful such as Maddie Bruce. She does Mental Health Mondays and she highlights a lot of recognition on this platform for mental health. She has suffered with it for years and personally I find it really inspiring and it's something that I want to incorporate more into my channel this year. The second person that I'm really watching for her mental health videos is Liv Rook. I find Liv's channel is really dedicated to mental health. She does videos like colour with me for relaxation, calming videos, things like that and if I'm having an overly anxious day that is what I put on. Enough rambling, let's get on with the video. So my anxiety in the past year has changed dramatically. I had CBT for a year and a half in 2017 and 2018 and I found CBT really helped. Now there's lots of different therapy out there for different people and it's all about finding the right therapist and the right therapy for you and if you haven't found that don't give up because there is so many people out there that use different techniques, different approaches to mental health and I think that's a really important thing. I was very close to just giving up with therapy last year because I just felt so at the rock bottom. I didn't feel like anybody knew what was going on in my head or tried to understand what was going on and I found it really hard to talk to a therapist with a non-judgmental approach. However, I have recently found a therapist that works amazing for me. She just gets me. She completely gets it. She doesn't push me too far. She's always checking up on me and that's what I like and I like the I like the stability of knowing that I will see her every single week. At the same time every week I like that routine so I know what to expect. I know what I'm getting out of it and I know what I need to put into it to get the best out of it that I want. For me, I will just put a trigger warning out there now. If you have emetophobia, you might not want to listen now because I'm going to be talking about my experience with it. However, I don't want you guys to feel alone. The fear of vomit is very common. It is more common than I thought when I first started suffering with it. I have suffered with this phobia for years. Since probably about, since I was probably about six or seven. I can't pinpoint the exact point that started it. Even in infant school, I hated if anybody was sick around me and I hated if anybody looked really unwell, if they looked a little off colour, if they just didn't look well. I didn't like that and it used to make me panic. I didn't like it if anybody around me said they felt ill. So like on school trips, if anybody was travel sick, I used to like, crawl into a ball at the window like as far away as I could get from them without 
getting off the bus and it was just always something that really bothered me as a child and I don't know why but, well I know now but I didn't know before why it was bothering me so much because it's so normal and the thing with emetophobia is that people that are emetophobic commonly do not get sickness bugs because you do everything in your power to avoid getting ill so that's having OCD and cleaning your hands 17 times a day whether that is wearing a mask when people are ill whether that's not going out your room to when anybody's ill not being around people it has different severities depending on each individual myself if anybody was sick around me I would avoid them until they were better I wouldn't go I wouldn't do things that I knew would make me feel sick so like I hate boats because when I was like nine in Crete we went on a boat and I got really travel sick then I've not been on a boat since hated public transport because you never know if somebody's gonna get travel sick I hated long car journeys I hated being alone because in case I got ill I wouldn't eat chicken at restaurants in case I got food poisoning if anything had the slightest bit of pink to it I wouldn't eat it I hated going to the hospital to visit people in case I saw someone being sick or they felt sick themselves there's a lot of things that now looking back on it I'm like wow that really affected my life I think it's something I'm always going to struggle with but I have definitely come up with strategies now since doing CBT and EMDR which I will get on with in another video. It's just another type of therapy but it's one that's really helped me. And since trying to do exposure therapy now, therapy for emetophobia is very hard. I won't lie to you, it's not like being scared of a spider and then being locked in a room with a spider and you can't get out it's something that is going to happen in everyday life that you've just got to get on with and you can't keep saying no just because you think somebody's going to be get ill or you're going to get ill because that's no way to live your life and I've come to realise that now I am now 18 years old I don't drink alcohol, I don't go out clubbing, I don't do you mind? I'm trying to film a video here I didn't pursue my dream career because I was scared of vomit. That's a lot holding me back from living a life that a normal teenager would live. And I find that quite sad in a way. Not sad as in sad that I can't do it, but sad that I've let this affect my life for so long. I think I'm now at a point where I've come to realise that no matter what I do, I can't avoid it. If you're going to be sick, you're going to be sick. And I think that's a huge thing that was really hard to come to terms with because I was so scared of it and I hadn't been violently ill, should I say. I don't want to gross people out too much in this video. I hadn't been poorly in a very long time with this and then earlier on this year I got sick and it was all down to my stomach. I actually realised through being ill that I had built up this fear this phobia in my head for years imagining it to be the worst thing on the planet and actually it wasn't that bad it lasted for a day I got better touch wood haven't been sick since but it made me realize that you can't stop it you can't keep controlling your life just because of this one thing because chances are most people are probably sick like once or twice a year down to illness i'm not talking about all you guys on a saturday night out drinking typically you're not ill that often unless you've got a stomach problem or something i only come into terms with that so i thought i would share with you a few little tips and techniques that i have found help me so the first one is talk to somebody talk to anybody around you that you feel comfortable with because keeping it all to yourself is harder than dealing with it in the first place it's really hard to bottle all this up when you've got so much going on in your head and so many scary things that it's really hard to keep that to yourself for such a long time and struggle alone and they always say a problem shared is a problem half help you let somebody help you with your fear let somebody get you better because trust me you'll feel a lot better for it so the people for me that i trust 
and that I tell about this is my mum and dad. They've been a huge, huge support of me. Years with this phobia, they've really helped me anytime I feel sick, calm me down. When I get anxiety and panic attacks, when I feel sick, um, they teach me like to do my controlled breathing and just to really calm down because getting yourself in that state and getting yourself worked up is going to make the symptoms worse. So talk to somebody. My mum and dad have been a huge support. Luke also. When me and him first got together, we went away for a night and felt sick and that was the first time he'd ever seen me like so anxious. He didn't even really know I had anxiety before that. And I went and sat in my car for like hours. <laughs> Not even a joke. So yeah, sorry about that Luke. But now he understands my phobia so he doesn't even mention it to me anymore. If he feels sick he just doesn't tell me because he knows I'll work myself up. So yeah, he's really supportive of it. He takes me to my therapy sessions and is always there with a hug when I feel anxious after. So yeah, I couldn't do it without him. So yeah. The second thing that really helps is I always carry water around with me. This is just something that's so easy to do, but sometimes you don't think about it. But I always carry water around with me because if I get a bit hot and flustered, or I'm in a room and I'm sweaty and I'm hot. Chances are you do feel a little bit sick when you get a little bit hot. So I always carry water around with me. It really helps when I get panic attacks because it just helps me to calm down, focus on the water, focus on the feeling of swallowing that water and make, clearing your airways and things like that that I learned in CBT to focus on the things that matter rather than the little thing that's bothering you in your head. Always carry around mint or chewing gum or like peppermint tea. Again, mint's really good if you're feeling a little bit nauseous. It's really good at taking the edge off it. And for me, I use the Rescue Remedy chewing gum. I just find this one really helps for my anxiety. It's a distraction technique, so it takes your mind off the thoughts in your head because you're distracted by the chewing. So I always focus on the chewing gum. What does it taste like? What texture does it have? How small is it getting? The crunch when you first bite into it. Things like that that really help to distract my mind. And after about five minutes, I'm like, what was I even panicking about? Then I have been listening to podcasts a lot recently or YouTube videos. So I just stick on somebody that I find really calming when I am having this moment of anxiousness. And I just put this on, sit there and just do my deep breaths and calm. Again, Talking about Calm, I use the Calm app. I paid for a yearly subscription of this. And I do the Daily Calm, which is 10 minutes to the long. Daily calm. Today, we'll be focusing on gratitude for the body. So I find this really helpful. The narrator's really calming. And I just find this really good because you're focusing on your breathing. You're focusing on being the positives in life and the positives of your body, yes your brain's going crazy but you have arms that work, you have fingers that work, you have legs that work, you have toes that wiggle and things like that that you take for granted every single day. So yeah. I also use their sleep stories and their meditate section. So I do the seven days of calming anxiety or just the calming anxiety and you do body scans and they get longer each time so they go from three minutes to 30 minutes in little stages so that is something that i've been doing when i feel anxious another thing for me especially when dealing with my phobia is to remember that you can't stop yourself from being sick you are going to make yourself feel worse by trying to and if it happens what is the worst that could happen you're still going to be alive, you're not going to die, you're safe, you're probably going to feel better after and most of the time it's a 24 hour thing and it's gone. So I find that's really important to look at. You can't go through life avoiding it. Sickness bugs, neurovirus, everything like that, for years I thought I could avoid it. But you can't. <laughs> you can't avoid it in life. If you're going to get it, you're going to get it. It's airborne a lot of the time and just because you're scared doesn't mean that you can't handle it. I can cope is something that I've been teaching myself to say a lot. I can cope, I can survive, 
I will be fine. This is just an anxiety attack. I can deal with it. That is how I think. I talk to myself and I take myself away from the situation. So I will always just try and relax. If I am in a car, I open the window, I pull my sleeve down and I put my hand out the window so the cold air is hitting on your pressure point. That really brings me back into the real life instead of all this trap of anxiety. Same when I'm at home, if I feel a little bit anxious or whatever, I take off all my layers that I've got on because I'm always cold. I run my hand under a cold water tap. I always do it on my wrist. I use essential oils to calm me down. I use lavender, the Neom scent to de-stress and relax and also lemongrass and sage. And I just put these on my pressure points or in my oil diffuser over there and I just find these little tips and tricks really help me. But the main thing that I wanted to get out of this video is if you are suffering with emetophobia, you are not alone. It is so common. Although for me, exposure therapy has been working, it's very hard to do. If you're scared of vomit, it's not nice to look at pictures of it and sounds of it and things, but by pushing yourself to do that, you'll realise that actually it's not that bad. It, it, I just try and think of it as, that is just food. Just think of it as food. Like a baby, it's sick milk. Just think, it's got to get out one way or another. I just try and think to myself, that's just food. It's just lovely food. I can just clean this up. And I can just erase that image from my brain. Taking the bigger picture and thinking, this person feels ill, they'll feel better once they're sick. Yes, it's not nice, nobody likes it, but I can cope, I can do this. And it's not scary, it's not as bad as I think. What better time to start changing your life than now? I think that's everything that I wanted to touch upon in this emetophobia story. I didn't want to delve too much into talking about it too much because obviously that's a trigger warning and I don't want to make anybody else feel uncomfortable however I do want to raise awareness for mental health so yeah next week will all be about different therapies so keep your look out for that next Sunday and I hope you enjoy these self-care Sundays it's really important to take time for yourself each week to do little things that will help you feel better in the long run I'm now learning that you can't go through life in fear I'm gonna change it do it now and that is exactly why people I applied and got a job in childcare in a nursery something that I have wanted to do forever for the longest time but Whilst I was scared of vomit, could I really work in a nursery where children are probably going to be sick? No. I can cope. I can do it. I've done it before, I can do it again. Yeah, I'm so excited for my new career and I'm so proud of myself for getting to a point where I can accept jobs like this and I can work with children and I can spend a day with my niece without panicking that she's going to throw up everywhere. Because if she does, well she does out there with this fear let me know in the comments down below because I would love to know other people's stories and how you realize that you have this phobia because I don't feel like it's talked about enough and this year I want to bring more awareness to mental health on my channel it's something I have suffered with for a long time and I'm finally starting to learn my triggers and learn how to cope with my anxiety day to day and that's how I want to help other people so yeah if you enjoyed this give this video a big thumbs up click the subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video bye